Pendulums have had the most unfair treatment in the game since their introduction, and I'm tired of acting like that's not the case. It's not a hot take or anything, more of a room temperature observation. The Pendulum mechanic was introduced to the game with the Super Starter Space Time Showdown deck. Don't worry, I used the database this time around. The deck introduced the mechanic with a whopping two premier Pendulum monsters, those being Stargazer Magician and Timegazer Magician, and with one copy each included in the deck. I have just one question. Konami, how in the actual heck were we supposed to use this mechanic? I am Confucian. Pendulums went in with a whimper. And following just a month later, we would see the Duelist Alliance, the first Pendulum era dedicated core set. And by dedicated, I mean that an unpaid intern of Konami on a completely different design team on the other side of the building had a briefly passing thought about the mechanic, which quickly faded from memory when reminded that he still needed to get Mr. Komani his morning cup of Birdman Joe. Whew! Hey now, that seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? No, not at all. In fact, I'm being generous. Of that 100 card set, a mere 6 cards were Pendulum Monsters. Again, Konami, what did you expect me to do with this? As it stood at the time to run a fully dedicated Pendulum deck, you had to run three copies of every Pendulum monster available. And even then, your deck is still nearly half empty. For a mechanic that introduced the very first alteration to the game field of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not unreasonable to expect that the mechanic would drop into the game in a big way. My disappointment was immeasurable and my game was ruined. A few months later, Pendulums would get a far better showing with the new Challengers. Although the set introduced a less than substantial 9 new Pendulum monsters, oh, they came out swinging, kicking ass and taking names with the premiere of the Cleaford Archetype and Rescue Hamster. And we would see this trend of damn near unidentifiable representation of new Pendulum monsters through proceeding sets. Secrets of Eternity had a total of 7 new Pendulum Monsters, The Secret Forces had a disgraceful showcase of 3 new Pendulum Monsters, in fact, The Secret Forces spit in the face of Pendulums when they introduced a new meta-warping deck, Necros. Of all things, Rituals bent Pendulums over and spanked them into obscurity. <laughs> And then Pendulums got left in the car while the rest of the family went into the mall with World Superstars. The POM movement started to improve in hordes, but were still no comparison to Necros. Cross Souls introduced 12 new Pendulum monsters, and Clash of Rebellions was to date the highest percentage showcase for the mechanic with an outstanding 20 new Pendulum monsters. Well, sounds good, right? On paper, Sure, until you read the fine print that one third of that premiere was Ignite. Easily one of the worst Pendulum dedicated archetypes in the game. And that's coming from a fan of the deck. The decks themed around Pendulum saw a huge improvement over the Super Starter. Towards the end of 2015, the Master of Pendulum structure deck was a much more concise strategy and utilized the mechanic better. And did it get better from there? No. Nope. The last deck themed around the Pendulum mechanic was Starter Deck Yuya which, just like every other character-themed deck, had no argument to say that it's competitively viable. What's the problem with that? You might as well have purchased the last two decks because you could have got 90% if not more of the cards found in this one. So Konami, what the heck happened with Pendulums? For a mechanic that quickly became the butt of all jokes of what ruined the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! How did it get there with such little care in its handling, from Premiere to maintaining the mechanic and the atrocities committed with the advent of Master Rule 5? Well, in regards to Master Rule 5, I have a theory that might hold some legitimacy. I believe that Pendulum Monsters that are Pendulum Summoned from the Face Up Extra deck were forced to be summoned to a zone that Link Monsters point to because otherwise, Link Monsters would have been made completely pointless in their mechanic with Master Rule 5. That's not to say that Link Monsters would have been rendered unplayable by any stretch of the imagination, but if Link Arrows were solely relevant to Links, their mechanic becomes unnecessary even within their own dedicated playstyle. So unfortunately, Pendulums drew the short stick for the mechanic, and they had to pal around with the pointy boys. But with everything else, Pendulums just needed more. Like a lot more. Don't get me wrong, Pendulums have a plethora of powerful support cards, but in terms of the monsters themselves, they fell on one of two ends of a spectrum. They were either really good. Case in point, Cleeforts, Pendulum Magicians, Magispectors, etc. Or, they were really lackluster, with examples being Ignites, Vanilla Pendulums, Amorphage, Dynomist, whatever the series of Dinosaur Pendulum sneak peek promos were supposed to be. 
The list goes on, and it seems like a large percentage of Pendulum's entire catalog falls into the latter. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! There's really nothing in between. Strangely, Konami has introduced a fair amount of legacy support for a wide array of archetypes with single pendulum monsters. Why? 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 Did Chaos Emperor Dragon truly need a pendulum retrain? Did Crystal Beast need two pendulum Pokemon trainers? Did Archfiends desperately require a gender ambiguous level 3 with not one but two kamikaze effects attached to it? No. No, they did not. It seems like a lot of wasted effort to incorporate pendulum monsters in this way. And these are far from the only examples, because they don't give any actual access to the mechanic. Konami is putting way too many chips on the probability that you would draw two of these cards to establish your scale in a 40 card deck. And that's putting an awful lot of stock in the idea that you'd actually, you know, play them. Pendulum monsters are a mechanic unlike any other, in which they need to compose a large portion of your deck to even be utilized to a slight degree of efficiency. I can't even fathom why pendulums were created to begin with if they were going to be ran into the ground just as quickly and even harder than they were introduced into the game. What was the reason? What was the reason? But I suppose since the entire mechanic is just a bad joke full of gimmicks, I'd be willing to forgive all of this Konami if you create a pendulum retrain of Pendulum Machine. But that's gonna wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What's your opinion on the pendulum mechanic? Drop a comment down below, let me know. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.